Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio, and today, there's a Butterfree V, and, not for nothing, a Butterfree V Max. And, you know, I, I figured we'd talk about Pokemon cards a lot. We talk about the new cards. Butterfree V Max seems kind of exciting, so, um, probably time to have a gander, right? I should mention our translation comes from the lovely Antoine Boulet, one of our very, very favourites over here. And I suppose we might as well start off with Butterfree V. Though 190 HP is low for a Pokemon V. I know it seems quite high, it's, it's not. It's quite low. When you consider the, the most popular one at the moment is Zacian V Rock in 220, this is significantly down on that. You also sit there with a retreat cost of 1, which is nice because you can use U-turn board to get free retreat. So, good work, Butterfree. No resistance, but a weakness to fire. And Welded X are a thing. And Welded X see an awful lot of play. Reshiram and Charizard sees an awful lot of play. I, I don't think this is a good weakness to have. Boo, hiss, etc. As for being a grass Pokemon, you're not even really hitting weakness on anything particularly relevant. Stone Journey V Max is probably the best one. But even that doesn't really see a huge amount of play at the moment. Uh, in terms of tricks, to be fair, right, we do have Turfield Stadium to search out evolution grass Pokemon. And we do have Netball to search out basic grass Pokemon or basic grass energy. But outside of that, you're healing with stuff like Life Forest, Prism Star, and Shaman, and actually, you might not survive that long. You got a pretty terrible weakness and a low HP. Basics aren't looking great. What does it do? Well, the first attack, one Grass Energy. The opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and confused. And I don't hate this. It's not amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I don't hate this. This is all right. You see, it's an early game attack. When you're in the mid game and your opponent is all set up and ready to go and they've got multiple attackers, you, you don't want this. You don't want to be playing this. I think that's fairly clear. However, in the early game, it's your first turn. You've gone second. You're allowed to attack. Basic Pokemon, single energy, kind of disruptive. Confusion means that if they want to attack, they've got to flip a coin. And if Tails, the attack fails, they take free damage. Poison means they take one damage counter between turns. And there's ways to modify this. There's ways to manipulate this. There's that Toxicroak that makes Poison do an extra two damage counters between turns. Not to mention we've actually still got that Parasect, which will put two damage on a confused Pokemon between turns. And is a grass Pokemon, so works with them quite nicely. So that's kind of cool. Not to mention we've got a bunch of Pokemon that do extra damage depending on how many special conditions is affecting a particular Pokemon. So the Alolan Grimer from Team Up does 20 damage base plus 50 more for each special condition affecting the opponent's active Pokemon. And neither Confusion nor Poison actually ever goes away until the Pokemon gets out of the active. So, you know, 120 damage for a twin energy on an Alolan Grimer. And this is where this can work. Again, I don't think this is an amazing attack, but I can see an advantage. Having said that, what really makes it better than Blacephalon's attack, and I'm not talking a good attack the reason everyone plays it, or the really nice GX attack, I'm talking about the one everyone forgets, the basic Pokemon single energy burn and confusion. And burn does two damage counters. Flip a coin if head's no longer burned. So initially, more damage. Okay. What about the second attack? We ain't going to spend long talking about the second attack on Butterfree V. Free energy, 130, no. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Seriously, don't do it. I appreciate the fact that 130 gets most basic single prize Pokemon. I appreciate the fact that you can use Rillaboom V to accelerate two energy and then attach a third from your hand and then you're ready to go. But if I'm playing a two prize Pokemon, I want more than free energy 130. Now, hang on a second, Wassie, you ask. Don't you like Heatran GX? Yes, I do. And doesn't Heatran GX have this exact attack 
Two coloured, one colourless energy, 130. Yes, it does. But Heatran's got an awesome ability that lets you move energy over to it. And it's got a GX attack that lets you pile energy on and basically one hit KO anything. That's why I like Heatran GX. I like the free energy 130 as a nice little bonus, nothing more. This is the pinnacle of Butterfree V. The best it does. The biggest advantage. The best thing about Butterfree V is free energy 130. I mean, incidentally, it's not. The first attack is the best one, but we're expecting the bigger, higher energy attack to be good and to be better. So, Butterfree V, it's not filling my heart with joy, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it's just not. I don't mind the first attack as special conditions, but I see no real reason to play it over Blacephalon. Ooh, an extra 10 HP. <laughs> okay, play it with Toxicroak to take advantage of poison. That is the reason. No. What about Butterfree V Max? Can that help? Well, 300 HP is the joint lowest we've seen on a V Max, tied with more Pico and Meowth. So, not filling my heart with joy yet. Um, sorry. I do love free retreat, all right? It's still got the same terrible weakness to fire, but it does get free retreat. So we got something we like. We got something about this where we can go, that is a good thing. Bad weakness, low HP, but oh, look. It's got free retreat. There's a bonus. And the art is adorable. And weirdly, the attack is just a combination of the two attacks on Butterfree V. Two grass, one colorless, 150 damage, and Poison and Confusion. So everything I previously said about Poison and Confusion stands true. And we've got 150 damage, which is fine. Here's the thing. Here's what makes me sad about this attack. I told you that the Pokemon we most want to hit weakness on is Stone Journey VMAX. And we have got our own VMAX. We've put free energy on. And we've got Poison... And we are still 20 damage short of a KO. And yes, you can use Vitality Band. Vitality Band will do an extra 10, but with the weakness, we'll do an extra 20. And then you will be hitting exactly 330 with the poison and getting a KO. But come on! If I've got to be using a Vitality Band, even with the attack and the poison just to get a KO on a Pokemon that's weak and frankly isn't seeing a huge amount of play anyway, really? No. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is an extremely disappointing Pokemon V Max. And I'm not saying it's out and out terrible. Fact of the matter is, right, if you play this with Rillaboom and you can get the energy on, because without Rillaboom you ain't getting the energy on. So you play it with Rillaboom and get the energy on, and you get a couple of Toxicroak out to do a bit more damage with Poison, and you play something like Alolan Grimer as a nice single prize attacker, then yeah. And also, fun little side note, Rillaboom will pay the attack cost of Alolan Grimer very easily. But seriously, I'm talking about a free energy VMAX with a stage 2, with a bunch of stage 1s. And even then, I don't think it's nearly as good as most of the other VMAXs I'm showing you here. I mean, even with all of that, would anyone actually play it over Dragapult V, Max? I don't think they would. I don't think I would. I know, I'm sorry. I, I'm telling you I wouldn't. So, yeah. It's not inspiring, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, it's just disappointing. Like I say, it's not an out-and-out -out terrible pair of cards. There will be plenty of times you go along to League and you get this rolling and you win a bunch of games. But I think if you try making a deck with this and you take it into a tournament and you try playing it against something like Zassi and ADP, things are going to go very, very badly. I don't see this as a rogue deck that if everything breaks right can work. Essentially, your roadmap to winning with this deck is cross your fingers that your opponent can't get out the active, so they have to flip for confusion... And then cross your fingers that they flip tails for confusion. That's how you win with Butterfree V Max. Yowza. I'm giving it between two and three Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. You can play this. 
there are still big numbers, not compared to other VMAXs, but compared to non VMAXs. It's going to be a fun card. There's going to be people that play it and do all right here and there. But I honestly think this is one of the worst VMAXs we've seen so far. But hey, I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love for you to tell me I'm wrong and to prove it. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'd like to hear it. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darn awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.